Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to make a tri-dimensional chess set from Star Trek, the original series. I'm going to use the very first Star Trek technical manual. This is the 1975 France Joseph manual, and it has one of the best drawings of the tri-dimensional chess set near the back. I enlarged the artwork so the squares would be two and a quarter inches, which is tournament size for chess. It may end up being a little big, but you know, what the hell? I used my foam ruler that I had made for Hellboy's right hand of doom to measure how long the curves needed to be. And then I cut some pieces of 5 8 inch aluminum square stock to use for the upright supports. I need to bend the aluminum, so I picked up a compact bender from Harbor Freight Tools. Now, this is meant to be mounted to the floor, but that was not an option at this place, so I mounted it to a large piece of plywood. Now, this worked really well when I tested it on some rebar, but the 5 8 inch aluminum was not really interested in getting bent. It took some odd stretching to hold the tool in place, brace opposite corners of the plywood base, and then actually bend the bar with my hip. Then I needed to trim the ends of each of the curves. Now, my bandsaw only has a wood blade, so I used a hacksaw, and then finally a reciprocating saw to make all the cuts. I needed the ends to be smooth and level to each other. So I did fine tuning of each cut on the belt sander and rounded off the square end of the middle board support. Now in the show, you can see the screws that hold the curves together, so I was not worried about hiding mine. I clamped my pieces into a vise and lined them up as they needed to be. And then I could drill out the pilot holes in my drill press. And I used a quarter 20 tap to add threads so I could screw them together. And I took my time and I cleared the shavings as I tapped the holes because it is very easy to add too much torque on a tap and break it off inside of the piece that you're working on, which is a real pain in the ass to fix. Oh, damn it. I knew I was gonna do that. Oh, I'm really now. After the two supports were attached, I drilled out the support ends and tapped them as well to hold the three main boards in place. Lastly, I ground out that broken tap piece of the Dremel and then I drilled a hole large enough to fit a carriage bolt so I could mount the upright to a base. So I got the stand done. What I need is a base. What I found that I think would look really good for a base was not what I was expecting to find because I looked at lamps and I looked at different stands for holding things in the bathroom and brush holders and whatnot. What I found was a shower head. And my thought is, if I can pull the end off, pull this part here off and get this set flat, I can then use that as my base. But it still kind of looks like a shower head. Now I want to hide that. And I lucked out. In the plumbing department, they had what's called a deep flange. This fits directly over my shower head parts. And then I can put this on top of it. If I run a bolt through all this and put some tension on it, my hope is it'll actually stay in place. First, I have to disassemble the shower head. Getting the plastic face of the shower head off was easy but the guts of the shower head were not interested in coming out, so I did the sensible thing and hit it with a hammer. I ran the carriage bolt through the aluminum, added a washer and a nut, and then cut a piece of PEX pipe that fit over the nut and it fit just inside the flange. Then I needed the biggest fender washer I had and one more nut to attach the base. Now, because the hole of the shower head attachment is bigger than the PEX pipe, I actually had some wiggle room to move the upright so the board support would be level. I'm gonna start working on the chess boards. What I have are three pieces cut for the main boards and four pieces cut for the attack boards. Now these are all cut from three 16 inch thick acrylic plastic sheets. And the sheets come with a protective film on both sides so you don't scratch them up while you're working with it. I'm gonna leave that on for right now because the first thing I wanna do is actually round off the corners just a little bit on the belt sander just to make it a little bit nicer. I just carefully rounded off each corner on the belt sander, being careful not to sand the whole edge. Then I sanded each edge by hand to remove as much of the marks left by the table saw when the pieces were first cut. My plan is to polish the edges. Now I do need to remove the protective plastic and wipe off the crud from sanding and use a torch to flame polish all the edges of the plastic. Now you have to be careful not to burn the edges of the plastic, just heat it enough so it starts melting. And it really doesn't take that long to do. And the results are worth the effort. With all seven boards polished, I started to wrap them in tape so I could paint on the checkerboards. I covered all the sides to protect them from both scratches and overspray. 
I just made cuts every two and a quarter inches in the tape. And the act of cutting actually does scratch the plastic, but it's right on the edge where I want my paint, so you won't be able to see it. With every other tape square removed, I painted the exposed plastic with a candy apple red spray paint that I got from an automotive store. So all the boards are painted. Plus, I've done a clear coat over all the pieces to try and help protect the paint a little more and keep it from being scratched. I really want to peel all the blue tape off at this point and see how they look, but not yet. First, I gotta drill holes in all these and I don't wanna scratch them up with the drill press. Now, to drill the centers is easy because with the checkerboards, I've got them already marked. To get the corners to all look the same, I'm gonna make a quick jig out of wood and set it up in the drill press. I just clamp the jig to the drill press and drill out the corners. And then I can move it back in order to hit the attack board centers. And then I move it back again to drill out the three main boards. And I'm using a stepped bit or unibit to drill the plastic because a regular wood drill can break the edges of plastic when it drills all the way through. Now you can buy special drill bits just to be used on plastics, but where I was, they were sold out of quarter inch drill bits. So I had to improvise and use a step bit instead. Now I can remove all the painter's tape and I can actually see the squares. I was careful to keep all the edges of the masking tape down flat, which avoided having paint run underneath the masking tape. And as I uncovered each board, I stacked them between paper towels because plastic is really good at scratching plastic. To make the stems for the attack board, I'm gonna use an acrylic tube and an acrylic rod. The tube is cut to be just under four inches and the rods are cut to be just under four and a half inches. The rods are a quarter inch in diameter and they are a snug fit in the hole in the attack boards. And the tubes have a quarter inch inside diameter, so they slip right over the rods. I glue all the parts in place with some Weld On 4, which is a water-thin solvent glue, and it'll seep in between the seams of the plastics. The extra bit of rod that sticks out the bottom will fit into any corner hole in the main boards. And I tapered the end of the rod on the disc sander so it's easier to move it into the different holes while actually playing the game. Before I put all the playing boards on, I wanna go ahead and use acetone to erase all the marks that are on the aluminum. And I wanna keep the acetone clear of the plastic because if I spill acetone on the plastic, it'll actually melt it and mar up the surface, which I don't wanna have happen. I just screw on the main boards with a quarter 20 screw, but not too tight. It's easy to over tighten plastic, which will crack it. Then place on the attack boards and set your playing pieces. The 1975 technical manual shows the starting positions of the king and queen is actually up on the attack boards. But I like this starting position much better. It's the classic one and it's more familiar. In fact, there's never been official rules written for tridimensional chess. Now there's been fan rules written since the 70s, but nothing official has been put out. And there are lots of different ways that you can make tridimensional chess. In fact, Star Trek The Next Generation made one completely out of clear acrylic but I like the aluminum and acrylic look of the original series, and this is how Odin makes. I have a Patreon page where I give away props that I've made right here in the show, and September's winner is Paul White. Paul won the Matrix of Leadership from Transformers the movie. If you like the video or have ideas or something for me to make, please leave them in the comments below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture. So these pieces are from the Franklin Mint set. They're just a little bit smaller. Just, just a little.